Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 580. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about mindset because we haven't talked about this for a while, and there's a lot of new people here who haven't heard a lot of my mindset conversation, but In case you didn't know or need to be reminded, perhaps, step one to wealth is creating a wealthy mindset. Now, I want to talk about this in the context of the wealth building formula from You're Already a Wealth Heiress. The wealth building formula is MCT, money times compounding times time equals the wealth building formula. I'll explain a little bit more of that in just a minute, but I want to give you the context of what we're going to be talking about in terms of mindset, because this came from a couple of real conversations I had, and it's always apparent when there is a mindset block, because it comes out in our language. It comes out with the things we say, because those are our thoughts and beliefs, And so we verbalize those things, our beliefs about money. So recently I was talking with a dear friend about how things were going with her. And she was telling me, you know, she was having some difficulties here and difficulties there. And then she said, well, it's too late for me to have money. Now, granted, she's not a young person, but this woman has a lot of assets. She owns real estate, one property is paid off. She owns two other properties, owns a restaurant and another business. These are all money engines that can work to create a lot of wealth for her. But since she doesn't see it or believe it, she actually has huge blinders on that are mostly self-imposed mental blocks. With a little shifting and restructuring, she could be very well off. Now, even though she's an older person, that means she's short on time. She doesn't have a lot of time or years in order to compound which means in our MCT formula, money times compounding times time, she's got to do more with the M and the C in order to have the kind of financial success that she really wants. So she either has to have more money to invest, which it doesn't sound like that is what's happening right now, or she needs to compound at a much higher rate. Well, businesses happen to be an asset, a money engine that can compound at a much higher rate, much higher than our typical eight to 10% for the stock market, which is our asset that we use for most of our maximizing of our compounding. But she actually has two businesses, the restaurant and another business that could compound at a much higher rate and build significant wealth for her. You know, the restaurant industry is going through a modernization of its own because there is something called Uber Eats that is actually bringing more business to restaurants because people who didn't get to go to the restaurant are now ordering and having it delivered through Uber Eats. So there's a whole new pathway there for more customers, more business, and be a whole new market for her. So thinking outside the box, thinking of new ideas, thinking of how she could compound her money engines at a higher rate is what's going to get her ultimately to success. Now, the other conversation I had was actually with a young person and he was about 25 years old and he saw a photo of a very expensive house and he said, I'll never be able to afford one like that. Now, how is it that at age 25, he's already decided that he's never going to be able to afford a nice house like that. This wasn't a $25 million mansion. So why is it that he's putting that limitation on himself and that belief and solidifying that belief in his mind that he's not ever going to be able to afford a house like that? I was pretty surprised, but then this is how mindset 
appears in our conversations. It comes out in limiting beliefs like that. It comes out in statements of, I don't believe this. It's too late. I don't have that. I'll never have that. I don't see that working out for me. These are all things that are coming from the picture that we hold in our mind of what's going on. And the picture that we have in our mind is what we're creating. Because that vision that you have for yourself is actually what you're creating in the outer world. So if you think small, then you're putting that limitation on yourself and you're creating something small. When I was young, I read a book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And I don't really remember anything about that book except the title. And the title says it all. There is magic in thinking big. There's nothing special about it except that everything that we create and everything that has been created started with a thought. So everything runs through our brain, runs through our thought process, and ultimately that is how it comes into being. So let me ask you this, what mental picture are you holding for yourself? Are you holding for your vision? Because ultimately it's that picture that's in your mind that you are causing to come into fruition. And when you have doubts, that's the time to hang on to that mental picture even more. Now, some people do this with vision boards. Some people do it with visualization. Some people do it by writing down their goals. Those are all effective ways of helping yourself believe. But I really like the use of affirmations in terms of taking out some of your limiting beliefs and putting in positive statements that are new beliefs that replace limiting beliefs. And if you haven't listened to some of my podcasts about how to change your mindset and the way I do affirmations and use already true statements in between each one to fool your self-conscious, go back and listen to some of those because changing what you think in your mind is one of the most important parts of wealth building that really isn't talked about in the financial world. I mean, on Wall Street, it never came up, not even once. (laughs) So that's why in my work, I included it as step one because I see how important it is. And I also see and know from reading Think and Grow Rich and reading the actual quotes of people who built substantial wealth over time that they believe this to be true. They believe thoughts are things that thoughts come into being. So one of the things I said in your Already a Wealth Heiress is the picture that represents you achieving your goal should always be the first place to go when you have doubts. I'll say that again. The picture that represents you achieving your goal should always be the first place you go when you have doubts. Because let's face it, everybody has doubts. But I know when I have doubts to hold that vision, to hold the picture. And I still work on my mindset every single day. I work on my vision of what I want my life to be, what I'm working on, how I want it to end up. Even if it's something like making a speech in front of a group, I'm visualizing what that group is going to say after I make the speech. I always have the end vision in mind. Even if I'm going on a long trip, maybe I'm driving a couple hours to another city, I see myself arriving there safely, the car intact with no accident, and everything being fine and me being happy. And oftentimes that even helps me get through traffic really effectively, where I seem to be able to be on the freeway when there's not bad traffic. I don't know, but that visualization may be helping. But seeing that end picture in mind is really what powers your goals. So when it comes to finances, we want to use that and we want to see the end in mind. We want to hold the vision of that goal completed successfully the way that we want to. In the young man's case, going back to the money compounding in time wealth building formula, he's a young person. So he has time on his side. People that don't even have a lot of money but start investing at a young age and have many years to compound it can end up being very wealthy. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there is a pretty well-known illustration of a young person in their 20s that I believe they put money into an investment for 10 years, starting when they're 25. 
to 35, and then they don't invest any more money after that. And then there's a second person who doesn't start until they're 35, and they put money in their investment account every year until they're 65 for 30 years. And it turns out that the young person that invested for only 10 years and then stopped has more money than the person who started 10 years later and invested for 30 years. So it's an incredible example of the power of compounding, but when you're young and you start investing young, that compounding is on your side because you have the time to compound. And as long as you're getting a decent compounding rate, such as a long-term stock market track record rate, like eight to 10%, you're gonna do extremely well. So that's why it's important to get started on your 401k or an IRA as early as possible. So do you see how you can use that wealth building formula, the money compounding in time, to make an adjustment no matter what age you are or what situation you're in? It tells you what are you lacking and what do you need to do more of to make up for that. If you don't have a lot of money, then you need to take longer to compound perhaps or and or compound at a high rate. If you don't have great investments, your compounding is not so good, well, you can put more money in or you can compound it longer. And if you're lacking time because you're getting a late start, then you need to make some smart investments where you can compound at a high rate or you need to contribute more money. But the wealth building formula makes it really clear what action you need to take in order to make up for whatever deficit you might have because nobody typically has money and compounds well and has lots of time. That would be great, but it doesn't usually work that way. Young people usually are lacking money, older people are lacking time, that's just the way it works. But hopefully this has clarified some of that for you and I put more of this in detail and success stories for different situations where people were lacking money and became successful or people were lacking the ability to compound well and became successful or people that started late and didn't have a lot of time in terms of years to compound and still ended up successful. So I hope that helps you think about the mental picture that you're forming inside your mind and what you're really working for. Get your vision, hold the picture, because the picture that represents you achieving your goal should always be the first place to go when you have doubts. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, we still have our review contest going for the month of June. You can win the Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audios valued at $197 some of my You're Already a Wealth Heiress books signed and personalized by me. That book was recently added to the list of best wealth books of all time by Book Authority and two individual wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a review on iTunes. That'll get your name in the drawing one time. A book review on Amazon, get your name in the drawing another time. And if you do both, your name goes in the drawing three times. Winners will be announced on the first podcast in July. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.